Welcome back to Weekend with Joe McKeldry, Kathy Lett and Narina Palo, who'll be singing her beautiful version of Bill Withers' Ain't No Sunshine in just a few minutes, not long to wait. My final guest this morning has had a glittering career. He started out as a child performer, became one of the world's most trusted astrologers, and since shining brightly on Strictly, he's been embracing his first passion, song and dance. Come on and waltz in, Russell Grant. Hi, <laughs> lovely. My first passion. Hello. Hello. Hi, caveat. I'm lovely to see you. I'm good. Hello. And oh, you're, and you're... Oh, it didn't sink as far as I thought. <laughs> I'm so glad. <laughs> no, I'm going to go out. with the term. We sunk quite yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> She's not lying. Now, listen, we're very excited because you're here to unveil your latest musical project. Oh, yes. It's South Pacific. Oh. Wow. Valley High. Oh. All this beautiful music. Rogers and Amistad. Yeah, brilliant music. I've just finished one of the happiest tours I've ever done with one of the happiest companies I've ever been with, and that was the story of Richard Rogers. Right. So he's worked with Lorenz Hart and Oscar Hammerstein. And so to be moving now into South Pacific, the movie, which is um, a, a big spectacular, really, for Cancer Research UK, but there's going to be food by Jean-Christophe Novelli. Of oh, themed food to go it, with it. Themed Polynesian food. Wow. There's going to be the lyrics under the screen, one of the biggest screens you can get, and it's going to be all held at the Paul Getty estate, and that is out in the Chilterns in wow. Wormsley, oh, in Buckinghamshire. Fantastic. And so what, what are you doing? You're, you're, you're... Oh, I'm doing my Rodgers and Hammerstein, I will tell you this behind the scenes of the making of South Pacific. Ah, OK. So Mary Martin, who was on the Broadway stage, why didn't she get the movie? Mm -hmm. Well, there's a lot of um, dispute why, but one of the reasons why she was probably too old by then to play okay. the part, which the movie came nine years after the Broadway musical. Mm -hmm. But there were a lot of people up for the main role. It was finally given to Mitzi Gaynor, almost by mistake. Right. She went up to audition with the director, Joshua Logan, for a part in Sayonara. And um, he said, I presume you're here for South Pacific. Uh -huh. And she'd had a big hit in There's No Business Like Show Business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they thought, well, we we'll know see. you can sing. We know you can dance. Can you act? And she got the role, but much to Doris Day's chagrin. Okay. Because Doris Day was at a party with Josh Logan, and he said, sing for me, Doris. And she said, no. <laughs> and so she went away from there. He refused to give her the role. And she said that if he'd have asked me to play the part of Nelly in South Pacific there and then, I'd have said yes. There you go. So it's one of those... Um, it's not a myth. It's an anecdote. But it's also, but it's it's also it's such an iconic movie. Everyone oh, it's knows wonderful. it. But, you know, in your introduction there, I, I said that, you know, song and dance is your first passion. It's true, isn't it? Because, well, you know, you've been acting on stage since you were, what, five or six yeah, years old? Yeah, I was. Yeah, yeah. Five, five, six years old. And um, I went to a wonderful school called the Daphne Davy School of Dramatic Art. There you are as a, uh, there you are as a little boy. Oh, that's me as a wee kiddy. Uh, that was Harefield in Middlesex, where I was brought up, and I was at school there. And I also played, um, uh, played, played a choir boy. I was also the head <laughs> choir boy at the church. I'm always acting, aren't I? Um, and, um, I and that was part of... The Daphne Davis School was part of Lambda. Right. So it was an outreach. So that was in Ryslip. But also, um, you know, you were, you were doing TV shows at the age of 10, 11, yeah. 12. You were on the buses. On the buses, Doctor in the House, oh. uh, Fen Street Gang. But you come by it honestly, because your, your, your mother and your father both worked in Pinewood. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, your mum worked on contracts, but she had a really fine singing voice. She did. Uh, and your dad built the sets. Did, yes. Didn't he yeah, build the he set was, for Cleopatra with a set designer. Taylor? Yeah, he was a set designer. And my uncle John uh, started off as a tea boy and went on to win an Oscar for The Deer Hunter. That's um, amazing. He started what? as think, a tea boy. Yeah, yeah. yeah he built I think we call on. that designer jeans. You've got such <laughs> yeah. a good genetic you have. gene pool there. I wish the thinner ones would fit. <laughs> um, they never will now. <clears throat> but you know what was interesting when we we've just done the Richard Rogers tour, and Blue Moon was one of the one of one of his songs, and my mum yeah. used to sing that for her auditions, and she got onto Opportunity Knocks with Huey Green all those years Gosh. ago. Gosh. With Blue Moon. Oh. 
Oh. So when it was sung every night by a lovely man called Damien Thantry, who's also the producer, I used to think of my mum. Oh. <laughs> you, you, you were brought up for some time by your, your gran as well. She I sounds, was. She sounds amazing. Uh, Lily, was it four foot eleven and a dynamite? That's right. Well, my <laughs> first grandmother, Alice, who sadly went on to um, have Alzheimer's, and I cared for her along with my mother. We cared for her. Um, she brought me into this world while Mum and Dad were working at Pinewood. Right. Mm. And then my lovely grandmother, Lily, who was hilarious. Mm. I won't tell you the sort of... Well, do you know what he used to do? Language. He used to bunk off school and she used to take him to the bingo. Well, <laughs> I, would, I would be ready to go to school and my nan would go, you don't want to go to school, love. Come down, come down to the Scout Hut. We're having bingo today. <laughs> The and University of Life, the yes. School of Hard Knocks. That's an education. I, yeah. I, I won once and I was so thrilled. I won a quarter of tea. Oh. Quarter of Brook Bond tea, as Brilliant. it was then. And, um, and yeah, they were wonderful, happy days. Uh, I first met you when you were doing the astrology, of course. Yeah. Uh, breakfast television. I think I must have been 12 years you old. You must have been. You did the astrology for, uh, for royalty and everyone. Yes, well, uh, Princess Margaret was the first at the Butterfly Barclay Ball. And then there was the Queen Mother, which was a public presentation. And then I met Diana at the uh, Royal Variety Show right. at the Victoria Palace. So I've been very lucky. What but amazing it was hobby. a hobby. Yeah. It was a hobby. Um, but if that hobby hadn't have taken off, I'd have never have done Strictly. No. And thank heavens for Flavia Kakacha. Yeah. Because, and Joanne Clifton later, I did a Christmas there special. There you are together. You two are th oh, thick as thieves. There we are. It's a gypsy and Mama Rose, really, isn't it? That's Is that right. what you call each oh, other? you remember, Alan. <laughs> that was the very naughty Zoe Ball who gave us those names. Mm. But we had a wonderful time, and I came out of that, and around Boxing Day, I got a call from Bill Kenwright, the, the great West End producer, who said, um, would you like to take over a Michael Crawford in The Wizard of Oz? Yeah, amazing. I said, the one at the Palladium? He said, yes, by Andrew Lloyd Webber. And I went straight into the West End, so I never did the Strictly tour. But you've, you've done so many big shows. We've got a photo of you in The King of Our, King and I. I think oh, that's you in that King was and many I. years ago. Look at that. Also, the eyeshadow got... doesn't work. Uh, well, listen, uh, there's, there's one I really want you to explain. <clears throat> if you think the eyeshadow's bad there, look at this tash. Oh, <laughs> that was me as Mr Stromboli and Pinocchio. Brilliant. <laughs> that was the Devonshire Park Theatre in Eastbourne, but The King and I was just wonderful. So to hear the lovely Kate Ballantyne um, from Scottish Opera singing something mm. wonderful from The King and I this yeah. week, it took me right back. Yes, it did. I mean, it was a tour of nostalgia, and well, I love it. You've done so much, as I said. It's been a, a glittering career, and uh, your latest project, September the 9th. That's right. It is, so go and see. Uh, now to play us out.